Okay, welcome everybody to the latest edition of the buy round with uh, not just a former teammate, but very good friend, someone who I um, originally met in England camp. Um, we first met, I think it was 2012, and you came over. Oh no, not 2012. What am I talking about? Like 2008, yeah. when you came over and played that mid-season test, maybe. 2010. 2010. Yeah. I was way off. I was way off. <laughs> Scatterbrain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we'll forgive myself for that. Um, yeah, 2010, you came over, didn't you? Um, made your England debut before your NRL debut, or did you played a handful of games over there? Yeah, it's nice to see you wearing the same T-shirt as well, Jammer, by Ten, the way. Yeah. Tendonitis in it, oh. lad, you know. This is actually... Is that a new bit? Relatively new, thanks, Gareth, yeah. But it's all the same sort of colour slash style. <laughs> um, Smart, lad. But, well, I mean, you... Obama, for instance, right, <laughs> he only has two suits because he's got so many decisions to make in the day. <laughs> Obama's got a choice of what? He's got loads of the same suits. Chooses one or the other. Makes sense. I'm kind of in the same, on the same level. I've noticed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Talking shit there, aren't I? Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, f fashion it isn't uh, probably a strong point. Simple look. Um... You know, I, I know what I like. I know what I don't like. Uh, being a ginger, it, it comes with its <laughs> challenges. Uh, difficult to look good. Uh, I'll just stack it against you. So you've got to have a, a nice wardrobe. Uh, simple, simple, but effective. effective. I like simple, it. Simple, but effective. my style. Yeah. You're, uh, yeah. I don't know. You're, you're a bit more out there um, on, on the fashionista style. Um, but, hey, we, we yeah, that's where we, we, we first um, met in, in an England camp. Um it's not all been smooth sailing. Um, you know, we we had a, a mutual friend on the show. Um, <laughs> to begin the show, actually, the very first episode of the buy round. Um, had Sam Burgess on here and he told the story of um, the ear pods. Oh, the ear pods. And his, and his reaction to the ear pods <laughs> was to subsequently steal my wallet. Um, <laughs> would you like to just come clean and... Explain to the Byron listeners and Sam, if he's listening, just exactly who took those earpods. Um, still to this day, Jam, I'm not quite <laughs> sure, but I did find some. <laughs> does say SB on them. <laughs> but, um, does, does it really? What did it say on the back there? This is your ballot. To this day, I got the blame for it, I think, in the end, but I do remember seeing you pick them up and take them. And uh, I mean, I, I, I was ta I was knocking them out. I was I, probably I, not in the best state either at the same time. I, I, I admit to, you know, <laughs> being part, but the, you know, the final taking, I think, I, I believe was you. Nope. Disagree. Mm. The funniest thing about the whole thing was 60,000 miles up in the sky and remember when you you couldn't find your wallet and you lost your head and you're literally going up to the pilot saying, I'm going to stop this plane and turn around. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> that, is not, that is, that is exactly not true. Was... I remember speaking to that very kind lady at American Airlines um, she actually got crew members on after you oh, guys had after, all departed. Is, and is that after you'd spilt the, the, the red wine the, on the brand new white hoodie as well, wasn't it? Well, accidents happen, Gareth. <laughs> and in the air, those accidents are they, they look more catastrophic. So, um, yeah. We won't go there. Let's, let's move on. How, how are you guys? Like, how, how, how's things going? Obviously, we're in an uh, off-season. Um, everything good with you? Yeah, good pal. Um, obviously, wasn't the greatest ending to the to the season for myself or the team in general. Obviously, with my, with my shoulder, and obviously had a little bit of time off. Now I managed to get away and um, you know back into a little bit of training, uh, ready for pre season again. So um, yeah, just try to keep busy, pal. Um, spend a bit of time with the family while I can and, and get away when I can, and um, yeah, just get ready for the season ahead. Yeah, and you've just signed at, um, the Tigers, mighty Tigers. I not have. not Benji Marshall and Tim Sheen's Tigers, no, cast, no. cast Tigers, right? No, yeah, yes, I have. Um, yeah, obviously a, bit, a big decision moving forward. Um, 
you know, but I spoke to Lee Radford a couple of times and obviously Andy Last is there as well now and um just seems like such a great club. Uh, they seem like, you know, great coaches themselves to um like I said, I went for a coffee the other week with them just for a brief catch up and you know, I instantly had that, that great connection with them. You know, they were making me laugh and it was a really enjoy uh really enjoyable, you know, place to be and uh, and that's something that, you know, I'm looking forward to. Yeah, nice. I'm um I'm excited for you guys. I, I really am. I think um you know Casa they've got a huge amount of potential. Um and a classy half back like you will go a long way to them uh, realising that percent p- potential. <clears throat> and obviously you're a Yorkshire lad as well. Yeah. You, you you kind of went when I think when you came through people w- were unsure about um like m- much about your background story. I think did did you grow up here? And then was it 15 you left to go to yeah, Melbourne? Yeah, so obviously grew, grew up in Halifax, um, playing for King Cross's, my junior club. And, um, you know, at the time, mum and dad, uh, you know, we travelled a lot as kids and um, decided we wanted to emigrate to Australia. So um, the last two years before we emigrated, which was the end of, what, 2005, um, so we are just turning 16 at the time, Um they yeah, decided to emigrate, pack up, move away. I'd played rugby union actually, uh, actually just before I'd gone. But um, the funny story about it uh, was originally supposed to move to Brisbane up near Noosa. I think probably it was six months before at the time, we got a f- phone call from the Australian government basically saying uh, you get state nom- uh, nominated where you get put. At the time, my mum was a school teacher. So at the time, Victoria needed you know, teachers. Mind you, we'd never been to Melbourne. Um, we just presume, you know, Melbourne, Melbourne Storm, that Melbourne, that would be, would be massive down there. So me and dad ended up getting on a flight um, a couple of months before we are actually moving, basically based on where was a, the, the closest rugby, rugby league team so we could live around that area. Um, to, you know, obviously chase a dream of, of, of playing professional rugby league. Um, and I think, to be honest, I think, if we'd never would have moved to Melbourne, I don't think I would have maybe gone on and had the career I've I've, I've had. Um, you know, at the time when we first moved there, I think it was Dean Lance at the time might have been there. If you remember him, um, come from Leeds, and they, they didn't have too many kids down there playing rugby league. It was all obviously Australian rules, wasn't it? And um, at the time, two thousand eight, I think the under twenties comp was starting. Um, through friends mutual i couldn't really tell you how it sort of happened but i ended up um saying come along and train train with us this was to get into the under 20 squad because effectively i was living with mom and dad so i was a bit of a freebie if you'd like whereas they were getting all the boys from queens and new south wales and bringing them down so we're having to put up accommodation all the rest of it basically went on a bit of a training trial and kicked on from there really played first two years of under 20s 2008 2009 and then went into the first grade squad at melbourne and that's where it all sort of big, big hung. But like I said, I think you know going to Brisbane would have been a lot more difficult. Where the talent is, you know, unbelievable up there. And myself at that time, I was probably wasn't as developed as I'd have liked to be at that age. And like I said, moved to Melbourne, and it, it's it's worked out. Do you think it helped you? <clears throat> I've spoke to we had Brandon Smith on the show, and about every, everybody's an outsider. Yep. So the, the club is is your home, but as well, you weren't treated as the English kid. It was because everybody's coming from all over the country that that in essence helped you to to fit in and, and make Melbourne home for you, but then the storm home for you as well. Yeah, definitely. I think that helped massively. Um, you know, because it wasn't like I was I was signed the English lad to sign to come over. We look, we had a couple of contacts, but um, it did certainly help. We had boys from Queens and New South Wales. You know, at the age of you know, sixteen up to the age of twenty, moving out of home. So. Um, it did just feel like a. It did feel home instantly because you know we're all from different walks of, yeah. of life, and it certainly helped me, you know, fit in a lot easier. That's for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. When you um, coming for at the Melbourne Storm, it's got one of the the toughest initiation periods. Yeah. Um, you are a kid from the north of England. They breed them tough up there, especially in in towns like Halifax. Um, you, you know what hardships all about, but then. You get thrown into this this preseason with you with the first team. Can you tell us what it was like for you in that in that first ever 
pre-season camp yeah. and what was the was the training at the 20s level anywhere near what it was what, what you had what they had in store for you yeah look i think you know obviously it's such a great club and you know melbourne storm and the players i've played alongside and the coaching staff have, have you know turned me into a, who i am today and, and what, what i'm about basically about hard work and um yeah through the 20s it was obviously at the time you had to work so you weren't full time you weren't training training all day but still you know as a young kid from halifax getting up doing pre-season in the middle of summer as well you know, about half five six o'clock it's still warm and going and running 6k in the morning and coming back at night time and training you know as in, and then working during the day as well so it did give me a little bit of a build-up you know going into going into the first uh, first grade pre-season but Obviously, it was a long time ago now. It was hard to remember, but to be honest, I'm probably more star uh, starstruck. Just a little lad from Halifax. All of a sudden, I've gone into pre-season training with, you know, the likes of Cooper Cronk, Billy, Billy uh, Slater, Cameron Smith, Ryan Hoffman. Like the list got, I think he's a flower there at the time. Like it just goes on and on and on the list of players. And but it was definitely one of the toughest, toughest pre-seasons I'll, well, I've, I've ever I've ever done. And they probably spoke about it, the, the SAS camp you do down there just before Christmas. Now that is certainly the hardest thing I've probably ever done. A little bit like when we uh, we toured for the World Cup and Big Bentos decided to take us on a mad army camp. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, was a tough, that was a tough carry that to <laughs> kick off the World Cup, but it stood us in good stead. Yeah, that, um... and um, basically all about hard work and working hard for, for one another and and doing the right thing and putting your, you know, your mate before yourself sort of mentality. And that's what we're all about down there. And it set me in good stead, uh, you know, for that year leading up. And although I debuted that year, but I only played two or three games. The preseason was certainly a, a, a very big eye opener. The thing is, the, the first ever preseason you do, I'll never forget this. Um, they make you work no matter who you are and you come around, so they make you work. For, your first two weeks while you're doing pre-season mm. they make you go and labor or get a normal job just to show you know like we have got a real a really good job here you know to show appreciation like you could be out you know working nine till five nine till seven whatever it may be so the first two weeks was certainly the very t the toughest because we were getting up at half four to go train make you go work all day come back in the evening and do a session again and you're not doing a, you're not doing an office job. You, you no, you grafting gra grafting labouring. I remember I was knocking knocking walls down, picking bricks up, forty five degrees. And you bust and your ass in the morning, and you yeah. have to bust bust your ass that night as well. Yeah, and it was, uh, but it certainly set you in good stead, and it set me up for my you know, for my career. With such a star studded roster, did did you see a, a pathway to first team there and? And with the staff around you, you know, looking at it and going, Gareth, you, you're going to be our 5'8 for, you know, the foreseeable future? Or were you just, were you just looking at that as maybe a, a, a stepping stone to then go to another club? Because you can see why, you know, people may view it at that as like, oh, I'm not going to get much of a chance yeah. here or, or be able to fulfil your potential because, you know, those other star players get their hands on the ball. Yeah. A, a, a lot more, right? Yeah, definitely. I, I think at the time, you know, I'd come in and I was playing fullback at the time when it, at, in the under twenties, and we got the best fullback in the world playing in front of me. So I knew that was never going to be an option. Um, but you know, obviously, Cooper Cronk and Brett Finch were there at the time playing as a halfback. Now going into that, going into that two thousand ten year, I think it was, or two thousand two thousand eleven. Sorry. Um, Melbourne didn't have a, you know, a five eight, um, and I'd played fullback. So I think it was me, me, remember Dan Chisholm and Maurice Blair. I think at the time, were all sort of fighting for that five eight position because Finchy were moving on, and so that were up for grabs for one of the young kids because we obviously had Cooper and Cameron. And, um, so I knew fullback was never going to be a, an option. It was either to move on to another club, um, but because of the culture down at Melbourne, I just, I knew it was the right decision that I sh sh for my best interest to progress going forward is to stay down there at a young age, you know, probably take less money than I could have got somewhere else. But I want to be around those quality players and coaching staff, you know, to uh, to improve myself at such a young age and ended, ended up doing that. And 
basically had a really, really good year, trained as hard as I could throughout like 2010 season, which wasn't obviously the, the greatest of years for Melbourne, but going in 2011, I got a crack at playing 5-8. Uh, and that rate, then I played every game until, until I left the club to go to the Dragons in 2014. You spoke about that, that year, um, the salary cap breaches. Um, I spoke to GI about yeah. it actually, and you know his experience as one of one of the game superstars and going through it. But like, how old were you at the time, um, and what was that like for you as you know one of the youngsters in the team? Yeah, it were it were crazy. It were crazy. I remember being out. I think it was Gosh's Paddock. It was called at the time, and. Um, we get called get called in and it, it, was, it was just surreal matter like a deer in headlights seeing all all these superstars getting called into a little office saying they're getting done for a salary salary cap breach and seeing the emotion and the players faces and what potentially lied ahead you know i think 20 at the time i think i might have been 1920 um i would just yeah it was i would just in shock really but it was hard for me because I hadn't played too many games, so I didn't resonate with the feeling of what the likes of the, the other boys who had played all these grand finals and been playing for Melbourne for the last, I don't know, five, six, seven years. Um, it was surreal, but I knew that moment from that meeting and moving forward for that year, how strong of a club the Melbourne Storm was and how they came. we all came together and we stuck together. Uh, and we they went on that year. I played, I think, three or four games that year. Um, but they went on to playing for no points, really playing for no reason, because of the pride of wearing that jersey and what the culture and the team and the club environment's about. They went out there and performed each and every week. And I think by the end of the season, they ended up would have would have ended up in top four. So it was a strange year. Like it was great in one sense, you know, I got to play a couple of games, but the pain that it, the players and the families got put through it was certainly very, very difficult. Yeah, I guess. So if you're not feeling the pain of having championships that you've won stripped. Yeah. But then you're, you know, you, you couldn't, like I was following that story from over here, you, you, you couldn't click on a news article with, you know, a, a star player being linked away from the club and obviously that was a situation that needed to be rectified. Did, did you look at that as an opportunity to like, I, I, I can be one of the, the, the the key players in this team now because th there is going to be an exodus. Yes, it certainly, certainly was like I said, very very difficult. But a lot of players obviously had to move on, and at the time, um, it was certainly a, an option for me to think I could be, I could stay, I could become that player. You know, I need to be and want to be, and um, certainly, you know, like that year went on and managed to play a couple of games. Um, I think I actually debuted in, in the centre that year for GI. I think he just couldn't bother playing. <laughs> no, I think, yeah, I debuted in the centres, I think, that year. Left centre. Um, but like I said, went on to play a couple of games that year. Um, and then 2011 came along and had another tough, tough pre-season, but got the first uh, goal at playing 5-8. And from then on in, I played every game that year. And for the for the next you know couple of years going forward after that as well so uh it worked out well in the end yeah obviously um you know you get coached by some great coaches throughout your career um and you know some that th their methods stay with you for a very long time and um they hold a a big place in, in your heart and your head um, how was it being coached by um craig bellamy yeah, it was great. It was great. But as a a lad from the north of England coming over, getting yelled at by some Aussie who was terrifying, it was uh, quite intimidating, to be honest, at first. But you could see why they've had so much success, just to, just to demand the best out of each other. And uh, I mean, you used to come into training in the morning and Craig would be on the rowing machine, and I'm talking absolutely flogging himself there before all the players and Matt he was what 55 60 whatever and absolutely flogging himself and I just think it set a good precedent you know if your coach is doing that seeing you working hard and I took what I learned from him and the players I played with is you know 
if you're going to do things, you do it properly. Sim doing the simple things over and over again in our game and doing it well. And that's sort of what I've sort of briefed my sort of career on, basically, is, is them little effort areas. Um, and that's what I'd like to think I still do now. Yeah, that's, um, it must have been an, an amazing experience for for a young kid from the streets about Halifax yeah. to, to have, you know, one of the... the the best coaches that our that our games produced on a daily basis as well, and and even then being around, you know the the the, the big three, yeah. and, and just how much you would have, you'd have just been like a sponge, just soaking in all their knowledge. Yeah, it it, it was. It were um, you know, when I look back now, like I said it was a long time ago, but it's, I had so much, you know, the people around me, like you said, I had so much knowledge about the game, and as a twenty year old kid, just. 21 year old kid just sat there just soaking all that information in and picking little bits from each you know individual and try to you know learning that sort of in learning that sort of way and I'd like to think I've you know tried to take a little bit from from all those players and who I played with and it certainly set me in good stead for you know for my career but um like I said yeah Craig was certainly a it was a big shock it took it took, it took a while to to get you to you know to get used to and you know but you be running around a track and you'd be like, where's Craig next minute? We just poke his head out behind a tree. And he just would, would never want you walking. You know, if you're on a run, you're all about, you don't, you don't stop, you just keep going, you push through. All about, you know, your, men, your mental toughness and uh, character, you know, not showing, you know, weakness and your body language. And, and that's, that's what he was really, really good at. And that's, you know, the Storm have had so much success. You know, the times when we've played in some big games, like, you know, we haven't had uh, the big names like yourself as much in the forward packs, but we've had toys. Like I remember Brian Norrie, who's now one of like my good friends and we played with. He was going out to play, I think, for Wagga Wagga Kangaroos. And Captain Coach then, Craig got on the on the phone, he came down. You know, he played at Cronella Penrith and all that before that. Got the chance, came down the year after. He won a grand final, starting front row, winning grand finals. I think that just shows you what Craig can do to, a, you know, to a person, what he can change and get get the best out of everybody. I think that's his biggest attribute. He just gets the best out of every individual. It's interesting that just about the you know the consistent application to little things yep. and the standards that you set. And like you say, not walking. <clears throat> yeah, I've been that before. In, you know, coached by um, by Des. Yeah, like one of the biggest sprays he's ever he would ever give is catching someone walking what? to the water bottles oh yeah that he could not fathom like in his brain he could not fathom why would anybody would finish a drill and, and then run. walk to water and yeah. not run there and, and you know you go to other places and like those habits are infectious and they're ingrained in you yeah and you and then like on the jog come yeah on. Like, what like it, it was the same at melbourne that you weren't you know you finished a drill on the jog boys right let's go uh, then obviously we go to different places and sometimes it's not that way yeah. um, but it is ingrained and instilled into those little actions those little little things that people don't see slight edge slight edge that people do not see are the you know the biggest things and you know make the best teams mm. but when you've got a salary cap sport where really you know fundamentally the talent should be evenly spread Spreads, out yeah it's the the devils in the detail sometimes and it's it's those coaches that you know set the standard and make sure that the senior players are upholding their standards and then, then they drive them. Yeah, it certainly is. certainly is. And like I said, that's what Craig was super good at, just getting the best out of the players, driving the standards, keeping it simple, knowing his players. And, um, you know, that's that's what he did best for me. And obviously, you come up against my Bulldogs in 12. <laughs> um, you got to win that premiership. Younger that day, weren't you? <laughs> no, no, Gareth. Um <laughs> I, like my, my recollections of that day in terms of the the game itself is you, you came with a, a, a incredibly smart game plan yeah. in defence and you shut down our main attack and weapons incredibly well and there's, sometimes there's, there's fingertips in it. Yeah. Um, from your point of view, 
like how much emphasis did you put on shutting down that um because I, I don't know if it's fair to say we were a one-trick pony but no but what you did was very effective and you know you, you did it over and over again obviously i just yourself i think sam cassian yeah. i don't know who else was in the in the middle there ball play obviously tolman were there yeah D dale a dale, little bit yeah dale um, greg eastwood yeah so you had a, a lot of ball playing middles there and um obviously leading up into into that week uh, we knew how dangerous the, you know your forward pack was and you know it's hard when you've got ball play middles you can actually carry the ball and ball play at the same time and I remember yeah that week we just had a call and that was to kill to basically just come up and just not, not give you any time and shut it no matter where we were and just shut it down and I think I remember a couple of times Sisa Wonga I reckon he probably stopped three two three potentially he just gets his fingertips yeah stops your centre wingers getting away and um yeah, it were, it were a close game. It were a close game, mm. but that was something that you know we we needed to come up with, you know, during that week for practice, and thankfully it worked on the day. Mm. How, how how much did it mean to the group after the the hardship, especially to you witness that hardship yeah. and the you know the I guess though the, having actually that premiership be acknowledged. How much? Did, how much did that mean to that to that group? Um, it, yeah, it were ma it were massive. It were, um, you know, individually individually for my, myself. Obviously, we're part of the salary cap, but at the same time, I wasn't. You know, I was a young kid. We all we all want to go out there and win. So I yeah. play the game and it want to go out. We want to win premierships. There's no secret in doing that. And you know, for for me as a young kid, I I wanted to do my best, obviously, for the team, but. For them players who had been put through what they'd been f put through, and obviously I wanted to have that winning, a, that feeling of winning a grand final. But you know, for them boys who've been put through all that, you know, strip premierships, all the rest of it, to be able to be a part of that, to to sort of, it was almost like it was Melbourne versus everyone in the in Sydney, and um, <laughs> it sort of was almost like a bit of a mentality as well. It's us against you, sort of mentality that we sort of we sort of had and. Just to see some of the like, you know, I'll never forget some of the just the the joy. Like I remember Ryan Hoffman, you know, I, I played on his side and he was playing back row. I remember they were what 30, 40 seconds on the clock, and I think we we're up by about eight points. I think at the time, and I remember I'll never forget his face, his emotion in the game. It was we knew like you know time we're done, we were winning, and he just looked at me and gave me like a bit of a wink and a smile. And people like him, just to see him, what had been put through to to them moments are just you know incredible and. So I know it's not nice for you, but uh, it was a great day, a great occasion, and um, like I said, I was made up for the for the boys who had uh, you know gone on and won another grand final. Yeah, um, <clears throat> look, obviously it, it wasn't a day for the dogs, but um, I, I, you know, on, on a personal note, I was I was you know pleased for you. Yeah. Um, similarly, when it happened in fourteen, I was pleased yeah. to Sam and the rest of the Bridges boys and the lads that I knew at South. Like I was devastated, but. Yeah, on reflection, you go. Oh, you know, I, I, I certainly take joy in my friends' yep. successes. Yeah, um, <clears throat> not not on that, that particular, particular day, time, but no. um, yeah, you, you you do. You know, I genuinely take joy in other people's achievements and success. I yeah. think it's important that you know, it's not all about you. It's about enjoying each, each other's yeah, successes. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. Um. So, uh, after that, um. You you win the the grand final, but yeah. then obviously I didn't think you had too long left on your deal. Some big offers, yeah, yeah, would have obviously naturally started to to come your way. Um, or any Premiership winning team, it's hard to keep together. Yeah, so you find yourself um with a big decision to make. Dragons come to the table. Um, can you tell us about why you why you went there? What was what was behind that? Yeah. Um just going back a little bit then um obviously the day after the grand final uh, my daughter was born in barrel so it was a uh, obviously a great great weekend weekend for for my family for me at the time unfortunately i was uh still a bit pissed i think uh <laughs> on the airplane back to melbourne unfortunately and there's no turning the airplane around was there so uh get back in melbourne and by the time I got back to Melbourne, my uh, daughter was born. Wow. Um, 
so at that time it was a uh, it was yeah it was a great feeling but just moving on to like uh, what you said we got through that 2012 2013 came around um you know been there since what 2008 through the 20s and got so sort of got to that age where it was almost like i want to take that next next step up that next level you know become more of a leader within a team and i was gonna say is that was that an ambition then to become like i want to i want to stand on my own two feet yeah you know people are going to say wrongly but you're only the player you are because you've got those the big three around you yeah was there an ambition to 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 go out and and prove that you know you you don't need that support system you you can do it you can you can be the the big dog of a team which eventually you came to be yeah but was that a burning desire after you'd managed to to win the the gf yeah as well? yeah it certainly, it certainly was it was a uh, obviously like you said you'd won the grand final and then you go away and play the world cup challenge and i'd achieved quite a lot at a young age um but i will get into that stage where i did want to see what was next for myself become more of a leader within a team and i did have that big ambition to go you know i'm going to step away and become my sort of my own man and my own player and um at the time the dragons uh came in they, they were struggling you know they lost a lot of senior players i think around around that time um and the dragons came in with a, a four-year deal at the time, at I think the age of 23, 24, or whatever it may have been. And you now it was a big decision at the time because I'd been at Melbourne so long and I knew, you know, the team, the success that they'd had and potentially could have sort of, could have kept going on and on. But, you know, I got a great offer. I, had a, I was young, I had two kids. Uh, I got a great offer from the Dragons to go there. Um, Probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do was to call Craig and tell him that I was going to move on. But Craig, being Craig, he was he was so open and honest and said, "This is this is life. This is this is your job. You've got two young kids. You have to do what's best for you uh, and your family moving forward. And uh, if that's that, you know, we'd we'd love you to stay. But if if that's you moving on, that that's completely fine and just give you comfort, doesn't it? But at the same time, it was hard." I was nervous. I never. I was stood on my balcony. I'll never forget it. it. Took me about an hour before I wanted to even call him. But like I said, he was fine. And yeah, made a big decision in 2014 to uh, move to the Dragons for four years. It's crazy, that isn't it? Because <clears throat> you know, people see that image of us as you know tough. Yeah. Yeah. You know, ah, oh, just crack on. But then because someone's done so much for you. Like we do what we do because we don't want to let, let each other down. Yeah, and we don't want to yeah. let our coach Cush down. down that. And that that decision when you talk about that sliding doors moment, oh. of, you know, if it have, you know, if there wasn't a teacher shortage in Victoria, Victoria yeah. you wouldn't have been there. Yeah, all those different factors that come into play, and then you you're willing to do anything, almost anything for this for this man, and then. You, you're sitting, you, you, you're like, I, I can't make this call. No, I, like, I, I don't, I remember what, what's, he, what's he going to think? Yeah. Is he going to think less of me? me? Yeah. Is he going to think I've, I think you, that was you the betrayed thing, yeah. him? Yeah. Like yeah. You, you harbor this emotion and then good people managers, they're, they're empathetic and understanding, but it's still as the individual. individual yeah. It's, yeah. It was difficult. I, I reckon I'd said a thousand times in my head, what am I going to say? How am I going to say it? Like, like you said, because he'd done so much for me, you know, and, don't like letting people down you feel like i'm letting him down but like i said he couldn't have been any more empathetic and you know said you do what you need to for you and your family and will uh you know you'll always be a melbourne storm player and you're more than welcome to you know come back whenever you sort of want you know they still have them now you know each and every year that the players expats go back and catch up so when he said that it was a massive weight lifted off my shoulders yeah i can imagine yeah. So, yeah, I can, I can imagine. <clears throat> um, so that year goes on. Yeah. With them, like, and as well, people assume that because you've moved from England. Yeah. Like, like move, moving to Sydney is nothing, but but it's not. You you're starting your life yeah. again. Like, but oh, you're only moving within Australia. No, no. You are. It's literally you are. You're completely starting again because all, all everybody was that you knew was based in Melbourne. Like you say, when you get there, that's your family. 
and then all of a sudden up to Sydney you go. So you you, you really you you starting your whole life again. Yeah, it, it, exactly what you just said. It was uh, I'd never been to that area really before. Obviously, I flew up throughout the year, um, but it was yeah, it was like starting all over again. Mind you, I'd already done it moving from the UK once, you know, at a young age, and then to get up and and to to do it again. Probably was probably now I realize it more. It was probably difficult, you know. Yeah, of time, course it is, but you know, yeah, yeah. Play has a massive effect on your on your life, and um, yeah, to uproot and move again, but. Yeah, you know, I ended up finding a nice, a nice place to to live and, uh, and and settle down. And it's quite funny actually. Brian Norrie was just mentioned before. He obviously ended up retiring, him, but he lives in Wollongong as well. So we had good communication, and he sort of pointed in the right direction of you know areas to look around. And then he ended up only living a couple out doors uh, doors down. So that certainly helped the move in the in the early stages. But yeah, it was it was it was difficult at first and obviously that that year wasn't the greatest year either and then yeah you, you touched on that as well as operating upro and moving again um you had a an injury which the medical staff at the hospital they yeah. they when you arrive on the table they think you've been in a car crash but you've been wearing yeah. your storm kit driving home yeah it was um yeah, 2013, you know, my last year at Melbourne and um, playing Gold Coast, I think it was away. And um, I think they were a knock on or some, I picked the ball up and went to hit a gap. And I think at the time, I think it was Albert Kelly and maybe Ryan James just got, and if I went to go through this gap and I think I got my jersey just sort of got grabbed. And as my knees hit the floor, I've got hit from the side. Um, I remember just hitting the deck and just the pain. I, I I can't describe the pain, but it was it was horrendous. And I remember hitting the deck and sort of being on my side. And my mind told my body to move, but my leg won't work. And I instant had like it was almost like a panic attack. I thought I was paralyzed because, like my mum was saying, like move, but my leg won't go anywhere. So you, so hang on. So you you lay on your side. And the hip that's so I'm out trying, yeah, so is, I, is facing up. Yeah, so I'm trying to move. So my trying, you going, trying I'll to just turn over. I'll just turn over just to like get in. But my leg obviously is hanging out like, like the ball and socket. So my leg can't move, can it? So I thought, Shh, I'm paralysed here. And then obviously I was in one position on my side. I remember being on my side. And Tony Abe at the time, I think he was our physio. Well, you know, Tony. And yeah. He... Um, Took a fair while to be honest to get on the the green whistle and the, the medication and um I remember trying to put drips in me at, at the stadium and nothing was you no know, helping nothing was really working. But they, were they trying to get it in on the ground or we no? They, I couldn't move on the on the on the ground once they'd sort of rushed on. The pain was like as much as moving my my head, my arm. The pain was just I couldn't I couldn't move. It was unbearable. I, I can't describe the the pit the pain from it, but. Eventually, they managed to obviously get me off and get me in an ambulance, but um, and obviously knock me out and get it put back back in. But they do describe it as a, a you know a car crash a car crash incident. It's it's very it's very very unusual for a hip to you know to dislocate. So um, you in the amb did they knock you out in the ambulance or you're saying they 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 couldn't get it back in? Yeah, there was no there were no there were no chance of getting it back in, but. If I remember right, they were saying you've got to get it back in with a certain you know period of time because if you lose your you know your blood flow your blood flow to the to your to your leg, you know, could potentially lose your leg. I remember all that going through my through my head. They're saying I, I they're think, saying this because like we've got to get this back in. Yeah, because I think was it Chris uh, Chris Lawrence did his hip, didn't he? Yeah. I don't know if that was after mine or before the fact, or I can't remember what year that was, but I just remember saying like. This was after the fact, but them saying you've got to get it in with a certain amount of time before you, you know, you lose all your blood flow to your, to your, to your bones and your ball and socket. And at that time, obviously, I were, I were freaking. But at the same time, they managed to knock me out at the hospital. And then all, I, all I remember after that is basically like waking up with my legs like this and the big triangle thing. <laughs> where, where am I here? Um, but once it went, the pain was obviously just was just gone like I, I felt fine I didn't even feel like I'd been injured until then obviously getting out of bed and try to 
get up and <laughs> get up and I couldn't even get to the toilet. I couldn't move. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a it was a big injury. Um, but thankfully, you know, I didn't do too much damage to the actual hip socket itself, and I think I came back and played that. Played the World Cup. Yeah, the end in of thirteen. Didn't yeah, you? yeah, yeah. So the end of that year. I think I missed 12 to 12, 16 weeks, I think it was. I think it was roughly about that. Or I managed to get a couple of games back in the end, and we obviously played the World Cup in 2013 because it was a potentially career-ending injury, do you know what I mean? At the time, could have been. if, But thankfully, you know, Tony and, and the hospital you know, in the Gold Coast did a good job. It's actually, like, considering the extent of it, yeah. to only miss four months is... Yeah, it's... I've done it's actually not that bad, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I was just quite lucky that I, I shattered. I didn't. Sorry, I didn't shatter any of the bones in there really, apart from a few little nicks like you do. Um, but obviously, I knew it was a World Cup as well at the end of that year, and give me aspiration and you know, yeah, to, to crack on, get get my rehab, um, and you know, I managed to get through that and play in the World Cup. In that rehab stint, was there much communication from the Dragons? Did did, they, did their medical staff have anything to do with? Yeah, so I suppose this is where it gets a little bit difficult, doesn't it? Sometimes yeah. it's I'd signed to move on to the Dragons, um, but then they were unsure of you know potentially you know am I going to be able to come back from this hip injury? You know what are you doing for rehab? Sort of you know because everyone's got their own sort of different ways and philosophies around things. So. But to be fair, they were quite. They were they were good with each other. Um, we did speak, and because obviously I was there for the next four years, it was a, a big decision. It was a big, uh, a big investment for big the investment dragons as well. Dragons, so I um, kept in close con contact, and like th thankfully we got through it all, and I was I was set to go. I played in the World Cup, and then moved on to the Dragons. I mm. um, moved to the Dragons. Um, eventually, you become skipper. Um, I got to join you there in 2018. I played against you a few times. Um, when I, was, I was still at the dogs as well. We had some uh, <laughs> nice words to be said, didn't we, Dom? <laughs> um, yeah, when you were trying to take that that kick, and I was on the sideline. <laughs> oh, giving me yeah, hurling hurling abuse. I actually kicked it didn't I as well. Is, I that, think, when, I, is that when we went into uh, extra time? And I, that was a that was a different time. Uh, that was a. So that happens was a, all the time when you've that, done it. That was a, that was a. Can't remember there's that many no, times it gets sprayed. Yeah, th that time I th the original one was uh, you were just taking a sideline conversion. I was telling you uh, <laughs> a couple of things where, um, <laughs> where I thought you were going to potentially put the kick. You net you smoked it, but that other one, that was that um, the the playoff game that came early. Do you remember? When I didn't know my neck. When, Sam Cassiano. Oh yes, that was yes. A, yeah. I think that was. Um, That's when I. I think that was my last ever game for the Dogs because if the Dragons yeah, won, yeah, it if was. The Dragons it was not, won. Yeah, it was. You went to, went to the the finals, and because the, the Cowboys were on the plane home. Yeah, that's right. I think yeah, they they thought they were out. Yeah, because they assumed the Dragons were going to win, I mean, and then. Well, didn't we go for a. A short think, short kick and someone touched it and then yeah. we got a penalty goal. Yes, so obviously yes, I took yeah. I took the shot. Yeah, I was put trying to put you off for that one, yeah. I took that's right. And I, I remember kicking that. And then on the flip side so we kicked that. I think it was extra time. Yeah. I went for a four I went for the big play, then I went for a forty twenty out on the full and I think that next set then Grubby Joshy Reynolds ended up kicking a field goal. Mm. Obviously you went on and, and, and ended up winning, but it's one thing I don't miss is you spraying me jammer, I must mm. admit, pal. But then Got to come and play with you. Yeah. 2018. What a year. Yeah. Uh, def would ben Hunt comes in. On myself. $5 million. <laughs> <laughs> Benny Hunt on casual. <laughs> what, 5.5? Yeah. Won't buy a coffee. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. He, for a man on exorbitant, no, no, like ridiculous amounts of money, he could keep it in his wallet. Um I come in, I'm one of the all-time greats. <laughs> Comes in as well. Old uh, Latimer. <laughs> Langlands. Uh, yeah, we, we made quite the... Well, we we were already good, good friends. Um, and obviously, we we, we, yeah, we we were already bonded. And then 
we um, formed quite the connection with uh, with Latsy, didn't we? Yeah, we just had a good group that year, didn't we? I must yeah. admit, it was one of the. It was just a great, a great year. We had some right, we had some characters in that team, but our uh, mate Latsy, uh, yeah, yeah, the adopted Englishman. <laughs> uh, yeah, I suppose we were, we were. <laughs> we were <laughs> Do you remember that gym session? Oh, I, mean, I don't think I've ever laughed as much in my life. So we're um, <laughs> going into <laughs> going into a <laughs> going into a gym session. Just doing a bit of foam rolling or whatever we're doing, having a bit of a chat. And like we do, we always have a bit of a laugh and a mess around. And I think I've yelled out our jams. You're like, "That's it, throw them fuckties, will you, pal?" <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> you are. I mean, you've gone. <laughs> Let's see. Throw us in foxies over, will you, pal? Come on. <laughs> well, then, foxies. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, but the funniest thing about it was, at this time, we were getting so infuriated because he's like, what are you on about? <laughs> what are you on about? And then you're like, yeah, take that slice of uh, stir sirloin steak off your head. Yeah, do you want some gravy with that? <laughs> well, he made absolutely <laughs> panty butchered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that was the best thing because we'd obviously have our our moments in camp like being in in england camp which we'll, we'll come to in a bit like all, all the the in-house england jokes we just bought to the dragon so latty when he came in with a with a really bad haircut like that in england camp it means you've been paddy butchered, butchered yeah and then like like pat butcher from extenders <laughs> and he had Obviously, no idea who we were referring to. You're like, yeah, Latsy, you want a bit of mashing gravy with that Ceylon steak? <laughs> obviously, soiling oh, ourselves man. nearly. And he's just like, mm-hmm. yeah. and then the more he he wanted, he, he knew we, he was a person that could get easily affected, Perfected. especially when he didn't know what, what the was joke going was. On, yeah. yeah, Matt, yeah, it's a fucking gravy yeah, with that. that. <laughs> You've been absolutely butchered, <laughs> Latsy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, and then even a few like Stephen French quotes to him as well, and he's just like, "Oh, he's got what, what are you on about rattling the cage." <laughs> You ain't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we did have a God. good time. He, we, Remember we, his uh, grade twelve carry on for his medial. <laughs> Lad, oh. we we we, sp- we spoke about that incident. Um, <laughs> On this, on on one of the sh- the shows uh, with Luke Lewis, um, oh. and w- when he got stretched off against Canberra <laughs> for a bruised knee. For... <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, I remember. Lattie, how's that bruised, pal? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to get round Lattie. I think it's career over stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> stretching off for a bruised knee. <laughs> oh. oh, no, it... we did have a good time that year. Mm. I must admit, it was. Uh... Yeah, off the field we had a we had a laugh, we had a ball, didn't we? Mm. You know, and on the field we're playing some good football. Mm. We're, another target of ours um, was the old download for Duffo as well. <laughs> um, he was, oh, he was he was he was a confidence player, but he was a confidence man, man. as well. Oh, he was. Um, he, he, man didn't syndrome, en- he didn't enjoy being the the butt of the joke. Um, but yeah, well, he was. Um, I think we just had a good balance, didn't we? Of like all the lads, you know, with the younger mm. lads, and like I said, we had, did have some, did have some characters in that team. Yeah, no big and, frizz. Yeah. <laughs> oh, big frizzel, <laughs> frizzel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, mate, you know what? And you look back and you think if the stars would have aligned for us, um, I thought we we would have won it. We, um, I think we were two points off. Off top, it was a really congested top eight yeah. that year. We flew out the gates that yeah, season, we did. didn't we? Think, did we win our first seven or yeah. was it something like that? And that, yeah. that game we played, the Anzac Day game against the Roosters. Oh like, yeah, we were. You know, I think the Roosters won the comp that year, and they. I remember hearing Coach Robinson say like he had to change his game plan because he, they needed a game plan to beat the Dragons. Yeah, and <clears throat> there was also like a different rule interpretation that got brought in. Around, remember that year they were blowing the pee out of it. Oh, but we yeah. were the di- we were a disciplined team, team, so we adopted. Oh, this we were right, early yeah. adopters to like yeah. we'll get up. We're not going to muck around wrestle on the rock. Rock, get out. That's we right. so we weren't getting pinged, so we were winning games. And then we hit changed it, didn't they? Yeah. Then they hit. We hit that. We hit that bad patch going into semis, but then we, you know, we went up to Brisbane and got our heads on, and we we're like, right, we're we're going to get after this. Yeah. Then we'd lost. 
we lost Vaughny, who was probably the best prop in the in the, the comp time, at the yeah, time. Yeah. Like he was playing was the, like football. the real inform prop. We lose him in a training ground accident. Um so that that wasn't ideal, but then we still we we go up to to Brisbane and we we do a job on them. Like we were we were so focused to yeah to get it right. It was the fair it was the club's first playoff game in, for a long time. For a yeah, long, long, long time. time. Yeah. Um and then yeah, like um I get myself KO'd and um you do shoulder. Yeah, I did my shoulder. My hands still playing. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, it, it just you know, and then I'd, you know, whether or not, well, I shouldn't have played six days later, but I, I did because yeah. I was committed to the cause. So that again, why do you do what you do? Yeah, because you're committed. Yeah, because I don't, I, I feel connected to, to these to lads and, and this coach in, in McGregor. Where yeah. I'm gonna, like, I'm not thinking about myself when I'm sixty or seventy. I'm thinking nah. about this. I'm doing this for yeah. these lads. And then in that game against Souths, you know, you, you think of guys like, um. Lisa Namawa, how well he played. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, we then we lose Simsy. Yeah, and then Simsy Luch comes on it. and you know both tries that South scored or, or all South's points come through, you know, a, a, a very young, inexperienced Luch, where if Simsy's there, again I think we win that game. game yeah. <clears throat> because of the injury toll that we had. I, I don't know if we'd have gone on to win it, but you but you never know. No, and you don't, you I, don't. I think if we'd have had a full seventeen it would have been an incredibly difficult proposition that year, but I mean, yeah, the stars don't align. And it wasn't to be. Yeah, going back to that year, I think certainly for the probably for the first time when we were obviously started off really, really well, didn't we? And a bit like in the early days at Melbourne, where I thought, you know, we're playing good here. Like you're that confident, you're thinking we can't get beat. Throughout that year, I dog, we were confident, we were playing well. We had individuals were playing well and they were playing well to, uh, collectively as a team but thinking back now the, the the big rule change I think you know did hurt us a, a fair bit mm. and obviously I go down against Paradu my shoulder um, managed to come back in that round, uh, first semi against Brisbane up there oh it? yeah because you I'd done my shoulder like round 20 or what I think it was wasn't it against Para the ANZ oh yeah and um Obviously, we were going good that year, so did everything possible to try rehab and come back, and it felt good. We had Brisbane um, away. Obviously, everyone was writing us off. We went up there, and I think we put 40, didn't we, on them at, yeah. the at the time. But like you said, I think that year, just the injury toll, you get KO'd. I do my, sh my shoulder comes out again in that game with about 20 minutes to go. Don't have Vaughan eh? And the week after we lose Simsy, I think, like you said, I think, just a couple of little things went against us that year, and but I certainly did believe at the start of the year that we could have gone on and won the comp that year. That's there, there was that, it was that that was the feeling within the group, yeah, wasn't it? And it you look at well. just how well, <clears throat> excuse me, just how well, you know, that, like Vaughn playing out of his skin, Jack de Bellin playing out of his skin, yeah, like everyone was playing well. Kate Mann was coming on doing fantastic job, yeah, me well, yeah, you know, Nene McDonald was unstoppable, um, yeah. That's rugby league for you. That is. You it is rugby league. And then, yeah, just, you go back for more, don't you? And the the following year, obviously, um, just a couple of things happened off the field, but um, you start the season, you you um, you, you announced that you, you're going to England, obviously, yeah. at the end of the season, which you know, I was devastated. I can still remember being at that training ground because we, we were at the uni and, <clears throat> you know, I I've been away that at the end of eighteen, and rumours where you were you were looking at going, uh, and I I was saying, I remember ringing Mary saying, don't don't let him go until I get there. Yeah, like let me get back and speak to you per in person because I'd message you a few yeah, times. Yeah. So like, Mary, do not let the club sign that release till I'm there because I, I think I was a, a, away, um, uh, uh, back back home and you'd gone back to Oz, and then yeah, I remember we were training at the uni, and then you just go. Mary said McGregor goes uh, Gaz just wants to say something I was like you can dick, dick. <laughs> you doing it? like no I was like no, no you're not and I think, <laughs> I, think I, I I almost I, like I had a bit of a sulk yeah. about like uh, my head went I was like well, no <laughs> you know like we, we've got something here but then it was like oh I'm going at the end of the year and I was like right okay because I think the rumours were yeah, that, that he wanted go to out. go 
I like was straight, straight away. away. Yeah, no, no, no. It was something I suppose. It was tough. I'd gone what dislocation into dislocation, and then you know getting to the back end of you know the, my career, and it was it always been an aspiration of mine to play in the you know back home in the UK, and it don't get me right, it were it was tough decision, but it was something that I think if I would never have done, you know, we only get one shot at this. I didn't want to reg regret that decision of coming over and playing. And, you know, I still had that year to go out, hopefully on a high. <clears throat> I think we signed Corey that year as well, haven't we? And I think he came, 19... I think he came after. Was it, did you come after the fact? Yeah, yeah, yeah after the fact, yeah. <clears throat> so I thought, yes, well, well, we've got one more year together, everyone together. <clears throat> no, unfortunately, Suncorp again does its best. I think it was round three. I do my shoulder again. No, that's when you give me an all-time spray. <laughs> Keep hold of that ball, will ya? <laughs> Can't jam with my arms out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, that, guys. I obviously I didn't know. I just thought you were trying to get because you. I there was all that conjecture because Corey had come early from Para. Yeah, yeah. And then I you, just what you to fall back talking? Half yeah, and, yeah. It was like, what, how, how are we all going to fit this in? Yeah. Duffo was throwing a paddy because he wasn't getting picked. Yeah. Um, you. Corey Norman goes, you know what, coach? I'll play fullback, let Gaz play five eight because that's where he wants to play. Fair enough. You're in it. You're then you're in at five eight, but then you chase back to yeah. get a kick. Yeah. And I thought you'd try to offload it, but you, you hadn't. <laughs> just let go of it. You you just pop your shoulder. You got an all time so. spray. Just keep well, hold passion of it. You, mate. Just keep hold of it. Uh, yeah, true. Yeah. Um. Anyway, you you come over to England and um. Yeah, you sign, sign, sign with Warrington, but I, I appreciate that you had a, a big aspiration to come over here and play. Um, obviously, you grew up here, but you had that taste of what the English lads were like in camp, especially that 2017 Rugby League World Cup. Oh, right? yeah. That was um, that was quite the year you spoke about that uh, that camp, that Bentos. Oh, Bentos, on. Christ. It's well worth it though, and like I said, it set us in good stead. But yeah, that 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 trip was a great trip, and still still haunts me a little bit. That trip to this day, with you know the the end result there, yeah. at the end of the tournament, it's still uh, I think it's one thing that'll sit not well with me for for a mm. long time. I think, especially after how hard we'd worked and how you know Wayne had brought us all together, and we had such a great time, and you know had such a good group of, of men and players, and. No, we just fell just a little bit short. Yeah. We um I'll never forget Wayne's post game talk though. You didn't lose today yet. You just ran out of time. Yeah. And that that's yeah. sometimes what great sporting contests are about. about yeah. Oh, you've got a shared desired outcome, but yeah. You gotta share it with another team that is just as close and committed as you. But yeah, I, I look back with, with great pride from that yeah. that tournament uh, as a whole. Like we we bonded. I I don't think I've ever been in a team that is as tight as tight. No. Like there, there are a few that put in. Sorry, I shouldn't say. Never been in a team that come together so quickly from all different yeah. clubs. You know that sort of representative arena where we were just like we, we were so close to it, and there were so many characters within that team. And even you look at who didn't play in the final. We lose Hodgie. We lose Lockers. Because, yeah, like, we were on the bones of our ass. Yeah. I'd gone yeah. back to fullback. Yeah, yeah, we uh, yeah we had a lot of injuries. Forgot about that, didn't yeah. we? Because well, who who played fullback in the in the opening games? I can't even remember. I, was it Johnny? Yeah, Johnny Lomax. Yeah, it might have been Johnny, but he wasn't. I can't can't really remember. Can't really remember. It must have been Johnny early because I was playing a bit out because I had myself, Kev Brown, and Luke Gale wanted. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I don't know if something happened to Johnny. I can't, can't remember. I just remember Bentos just coming up as Bentos. You know, he is mm. casual as goes. He ever played fullback? <laughs> <You know? laughs> as, as easy as that. Yeah. Wait, well, yeah, like I played a little bit. I haven't played. In, I haven't played there for a, no for for a while. But mm. I played a little bit when I was a bit younger. And thought, all right, then. play fullback this week against France. Anyway, well, I think I think they went perfect at the time. Mm. We ended up going out putting in quite a good performance as a team and. That were it. Then I ended up just staying at fullback yeah. for the rest of the tournament, and then I'm having to do 
kick returns against Papua New Guinea and Tonga and getting, <laughs> to get, for game. <laughs> but yeah, luckily, luckily we had Ryan Hall and I think Jermaine on the wings yeah. at the time. So when you got them two big fellas at the back there, it made yeah. life easier. Yeah, they did. Apart from when we played that <laughs> game against Tonga and oh, Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah, I, that was one of the. That's I'd have to be up there with one of the most incredible atmospheres to be a, my, it, a part it, of. For me, still to this day, it beats Wembley, it beats Old Trafford, yeah, it beats ANZ, a full ANZ, beats everything. You actually couldn't hear yourself speak, could you out there? It, for the it whole was game, insane. I thought we were going to have a riot on our hands as well at the end. <laughs> like well, I remember like football. Like I, if my, I can remember thinking, yes, we've won. But shit, my family are in the crowd here. Yeah, and it we need to get. I need to get them down the pitch quick, quick, because this is gonna go off. And to be fair, the Tongan fans just kept singing. Yeah, they did. It's like, how good is this? Yeah. Like, wow. But that moment where, you know, oh. they've gone try, try, try. Right, one, like two yeah, minutes right. left. Yeah, yeah, we were up we're like, eighteen nil. What, what's going like, on? What is going on here? <laughs> Bedjo had left, so that, like we, we yeah. Were, and then we were scrambling, scrambling, scrambling. That's when OG did his knee in it in that game. Yeah. So he'd gone. Yeah, he'd gone. So we were down on Lee. Jez takes that intercept. And you just gone, <laughs> oh, yes, it's yeah. over. And then he just fucking spills the ball. And you're like, <laughs> in the fucking one-on-one -on -one for Fita and oh, Whitehead. Oh, God. Yeah. The Man. End. Oh, it's making me sweat. I know. I'm... <laughs> it it yeah. is quick. But anyway, that 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 group of men... Like wow, what what a what a bunch of of characters! Like that was some f funny funny times when in that in, on that tour. And oh, you think of people like Scott Taylor. Wow, the, yeah, he was a uh, eight week stag do on it for uh, <laughs> <laughs> Big Scott. <laughs> he uh... <laughs> the the bomb squad captain. Yeah, the he bomb was squad. the bomb squad captain, Scott Taylor. He was the great funniest value. man alive. But you know what? You you in you know. Tag's contribution, you know, on the field, <laughs> probably minimal, but like he, he was one of them that just brings a group together and you know, happy to be like a bit of the butt of the joke oh, and just, yeah. just, but just putting crap on everyone all the time. Without was, Tag, there, that tour definitely wouldn't have been the same. He was, no. uh, he was a character, wasn't he? He certainly he was. was just hanging shit on everyone every mm. two minutes, and getting just... into Gailey's head, <laughs> like about his hair, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> square bed, yeah, and this. Mate, were you were you there at that time when Chris when we set Chris Harrington off and we went to the races in um, in Melbourne, Melbourne and we said right n next one to speak to Heiner Hi Hi went for a piss and it was like next one to speak to Heiner oh yeah has to buy a round, round of shots and fucking no one spoke to him <laughs> and it was genuinely <laughs> awkward and Heiner was like hey what, what's going on and it's just like and he had obviously no, no idea. idea Paul like, like yeah. I remember I think there was only like four or five of us in that group and I just remember we played we we kept on there for so long and then kept like turning away from right. him and then, and then eventually we told like had to tell we him. had to tell him because it just got too bad yeah. it got <laughs> that bad and he, rem he, bad he, rem yeah, he remembers being like you know what, what, what have what I done <laughs> <laughs> oh they're too good at times mate they, they, they really were and you know Ben you know Wayne, Wayne Bennett had such a great knack of yeah, bringing he's... players together. We we saw that with what he did with that um, worst ever Queensland team. Yeah, you know, you, it, for me, it's no surprise when people say stuff like that. And you got him as the coach; he just pushes that narrative, doesn't he? He does. He just knows how to get each, each and every individual up and ready to play, don't he? And it's he's so laid back, but at the same time, he can just get your attention like that and and get you ready to play. And yeah, I learned so much off him as well. You know, he's very similar to Craig and. Uh, yeah, just just good value, good value to be around the place as well. He, he was, he was. I, you know, look back on on those times and yeah, just 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 smile. Yeah, we, we yeah, I was fortunate to go on and, and play in the the um, series winning team in eighteen, and again, it's the same sort of yeah. feelings. It's mad because I, I assumed you were there, but we were obviously yeah, no. speaking before, and you just forget who was who was there and who was part of it you know you remember batty was there you can't you, never you always remember where batty is like, yeah. yeah yeah headlock king <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right what is right smelly <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Go on, dickhead. You should have seen him, right? So I've been trying to get Batty on this podcast. Sent him a message. Hey, Batty, are you free on this day? Right. And yeah, you know on WhatsApp, you yeah. can see if people have read the message. Right. He's not, he's not even opened it. But he didn't know that I was going into England camp two days later. So I've come in. And then he's just gone... I could see him go like, oh, oh. and I was like, oh, oh Batty, you know, I was going to message you back. I was going to message you back. I was like, you shit, shit house. <laughs> I was like, I know what you do, Batty. You just <laughs> brushed me and like, don't lie. And he's like, no, I, 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 oh. right. I was going to, and I was like, <laughs> Batty, got him out. Brush me, man. Yeah. Just don't worry about it. Shit but he, like, him, you, see, you know, normally you see someone like, oh, oh but he yeah. went, oh, no. Oh, like his stomach sank. <laughs> <laughs> oh brilliant um, well, guys we'll, we'll we'll wrap this up soon mate but I um, wanted to talk about you you just signed that deal with um, with Cass but you know lots of rumours back in Oz not just this year but the year before about a potential return um, you know they're crying out for experienced halves so we've seen what um, you know experienced halves like um, Chad Townsend uh, did it the Cowboys Reynolds moving up to, to Brisbane the difference that those experienced halves um, have made yeah. was it was it on your radar at all um, or, or or was it just you, you know people putting two and two together yeah look it was obviously I moved at the end of 2019 into 2020 and you know we've been here what two and a half months and Covid it you know and at that time, going through that time, unfortunately, went through a breakdown in my marriage, and um, my kids ended up relocating back to to Australia. So, and with COVID and travel, it was yeah, I was unsure of what the future may lie ahead. Obviously, we, we had no rugby over here at the time with COVID, um, and I obviously went back home. But you know, at the same time, you know, I just signed for Warrington, and I had you know some aspirations of winning things and you know, I'm playing well over here, here in the UK around my family and uh, you know it's not as easy as just going back and try to get a you know get a deal like that at the end of the day it's our, it's our job our livelihood and it's you know it's our work and you know decided re to return to the UK um, but at the time there was you know I was because I wasn't sure where where I was at with with the situation um, you know, I was having a little look around in Australia to see if there was something there. But at the same time, you know, I knew what I wanted to uh, to do and achieve, and uh, you know, return back to the UK so I could be around my family, like my grandparents, and and things like that. And unfortunately, I've not been able to do that at my, my time at Warrington. Um, it's been quite difficult. You know, being away from the kids is um, certainly very, very difficult. But you know, I'll keep doing what I keep doing. You know, for them, we'll yeah. keep going out there, and um, I'll keep trying to make them proud. And you know, that's all I've ever done in my in my career is to, uh, to you know do the, do the do the best for them. And uh, you know, as hard as it is, I will I will continue to to, to do that for them. Yeah, <clears throat> no doubt, guys. And you know, you got a huge fight on your hands, and all your mates are right behind you. Cheers, mate. All Come right, <clears throat> thanks you, um, guys, for joining us on the bar, mate. I've um, I've I've loved talking with you, mate. We've uh, talked some serious stuff, but mate, the most important thing is, you know, a lot of time in life is never take yourself too seriously and, and have some fun. And we certainly know how to do that. And uh, it's a pleasure to share your story here with us today. And um, thank you again. Um, until next time, be seeing you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>